Hello, I'd like to do a vlog for you. So a few people have been asking uh, for me just to do a little bit of a, uh, a vlog, just to try and uh, give you some updates and let you know what I've been doing, what I plan to do. So I hope I can answer some of those questions here for you today. So first up, let's look to the future and what's coming up for the channel. So the biggest news that I think the channel's had for quite some time is that myself and Jojo ASMR, a fellow Australian, has recorded a collaboration so I'd like to thank Jojo ASMR for traveling up from Sydney to the Gold Coast where I live and spending some time with me to record some videos. So what those videos are, we're going to leave it up to there. But what I can tell you is that one of the videos that we recorded together for my channel uh, I think has come out quite good and uh, we were both quite um, happy with the, the the recording that we created and there is a second video that I will also upload. I believe his video will go up next week and then I'll put one up the week after that and then the other one will come up not long after so i hope you can tune in for that um what else is coming up so um for the channel um i'm starting to set up to uh do some live uh, content for you and so i really hope to create something similar set up to to here and now and um, over the next few days, I'm going to do some testing to see what the sound levels are going to be like. And I hope that I can do it live. And uh, it's my intention for you guys to, and girls, of course, put me on the spot. Make me, well, not make me, but ask me to do a role play. You know, you can be as creative as possible within the boundaries of what is acceptable on YouTube um, but most ASMR stuff that I do is acceptable I think so you know I, I'd love to do full live role plays um, and try and you know create some of that uh, those experiences that we we look for when we come onto this platform and uh, hoping to find some uh, relaxing experiences. So um, a lot of what I do is, is try and create experiences for you that will create a memory, like a, a building block. So, for example, with my son, I try and create experiences for him that create like a foundational memory building block that helps you know, um, create his character. Well, for me, growing up, ASMR was very foundational for me and I distinctly remember all of the places and times that I would experience it, almost all of them. So, and, and I'm trying to recreate the experiences that I experienced growing up from a child to an adult. I try and make those that, that you remember, 
that you enjoy, you, you remember like little moments and, and the memories and the feelings and the experiences. And so I think a lot of that is lost in this world. And, you know, as time has gone on, people have become more separated and we need social interaction with other people and it's almost like we really need those social interactions uh, for our mind and our body and our spirit to to be healthy and when we live in a little unit and there's other people living in units around you or houses we put fences up um, we barely communicate and talk like when I was a kid, you'd run around the neighborhood and, and you'd know everybody and, and you'd have a street party where you literally closed down the street and, and a lot of that is lost today. And so, you know, I think that the ASMR content that we create helps to bridge that loneliness that we feel because now we're so separated from people so I'm trying to create experiences that you can take with you for the rest of your life and um, look back upon and and be happy when you think about these these little moments that we work to create uh, sorry to go on a little bit of a rant so what's coming up for the channel live videos um i want to do some more role plays um i've been kind of neglecting it maybe a little bit anxious to do a certain character's role play that a lot of people are asking for but i'm going to try and bring those characters back as soon as i can i just i need to try and focus and and go in with a uh, an intention to to try and uh, recreate a little bit of that magic that you guys remember those little building blocks of memories you know I don't want to disappoint them so there's a little bit of pressure on me for some of the characters that you remember um, there's been a few calls for the Captain Coco Crinkle Pop which um, I will in time bring back um, for the fun and the flavor of something not so serious and there's no pressure for me to do something like that it's quite uh, relaxing and enjoyable to create something that is um, that you don't feel any pressure to that you have to perform so I've tried to recreate a few videos lately and I've felt that I haven't done as well as what I could have, but I'm trying my best. So some I feel are really good, some I feel are not up to my the best standard, but I've looked at some of my old videos and it's hard to replicate or recreate some of it. So I kind of have to move on and try and find a different way to present things that I know that some people like all right so um here now uh, my equipment the room that i'm in and the environment that i'm in is different to the past so in the past i had a fully soundproofed room that i built well not me personally but i had built for me and i did a lot of the work myself as well it was uh, very nice to have, but I don't have that anymore. And so I'm making do with what I've got. And I've got a, a couple of rooms available. So I have a, a small room, which is more soundproof. And right now you can hear a siren going in the background, maybe. If, but I don't think I can remove that from the audio. But this room... I need to put some effort in to try and uh, make it a little bit more soundproof. Um, and also, 
there's sound treatment where as a, a wall will reflect sound and so I need to have some type of sound absorption devices. I've got some, but I need a lot more to be honest. And so um, right now there's in the background, you don't see that there's a blanket over there and there's a, another blanket over there and there's one over there and there's a pillow over there and there's a panels all around to try and capture the sound and try and absorb it so it doesn't get too reflective. Um, so that's the environment. So the equipment. Um, so I'm trying to uh, upgrade some of my audio recording equipment um, just because I would like to. The gain I would get will only be very, very small. But it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. So, um, just one second. So, I have a list of brands, parts, and things that I would um, consider as an upgrade. So, uh, Newman, or however you pronounce it, have a line of microphones, a preamplifier, and an audio interface. And I am wanting to try and reach out to these, some of these companies and um, it'd be really nice if they could sponsor the channel and um, let me try out and use some of their equipment. So that is one of the largest names in professional audio equipment. Um, Shopes is another manufacturer of microphones. It has some very, very, very nice microphones, um, but I can't see them sponsoring me. Um, some more microphones is Lewitt. So Lewitt have some microphones which they tried to market a little while ago for ASMR content and I've reached out to them and they've responded with another request for, to connect with them and so I'm just hoping to hear back maybe in the next week. From them they have some decent microphones um, Telefunken is a microphone that's been suggested. They're very, very expensive. Um, so um, let's see. For preamplifiers, this is the thing that I want to upgrade most. So I'm using some old Tascam UH-7000 preamps. I'm still using the same preamps. Um, what I'm looking for is that the microphone plugs into the preamp and the preamp, you can turn up the gain and control the gain in it. And it just makes the sound sound a little bit better. Now, the preamplifiers that I would want, I don't want them to change the sound. I want them to just make it a little bit better and give me a way to increase the uh, volume without introducing noise from the microphone or the preamplifier. So uh, Newman have a very nice preamplifier that would suit. Um, there's a company called Grace, who I've been looking at for a very, very, very long time. They have a preamplifier that would be nice. There's another one called Millennia, um, another one called Camden. So I'm looking at these companies that, and uh, trying to get some of their equipment. And for audio interfaces, um, I'd love an RME. Uh, I think they're a couple of thousand dollars for their basic interface. Um, Universal Audio has something called a Vault 4, which is quite cheap. Um, Rode have a Rodecaster, which would probably be really good live. And I've always wanted a sound devices portable recorder. And so that's some of the audio equipment that I've been looking at that I'd like to upgrade. Um, my camera is something that uh, I would consider upgrading in the future. Um, I kind of like the camera that I have. It's a video camera. It's not a digital still camera. Um, so like the Sony digital still cameras, the Canon ones and uh, the other ones and stuff like that, they produce beautiful images. Um, 
Uh, but I kind of like the simplicity of um, my old camera and I'd probably try and upgrade to something similar, which is something that is a video camera first and not a digital still camera. Uh, but that's, I, I want to try and get some audio equipment. So right now I'm using the Rode shotgun mics that are pointing down. Um, I've been using the Rode uh, large diaphragm mics. They are much, much quieter. And when you're recording very, very quiet sounds, which I do often, the, the Rode NT1s are better in an environment that is not fully soundproof. So the Rodes work very, very well in the soundproof environment, um, but they still have a bit of noise that comes through them. But the Rode NT1s are extremely quiet and uh, actually really, really good at most applications. They're an amazing microphone for the price. Okay, so let's get on to the part of the vlog that I was... Um, this was created for so kind of what have I been doing what my focus has been and where I've been for the last it feels like eight years I still remember a certain day about eight years ago that's um, you know you tend to go down a different path and it leads you to where I am today so I think over the last number of years, there was a period of time in my life where I guess you would say I wasn't as happy or relaxed. The environment that you're in is sometimes difficult and it can be difficult for anybody. And I think... Uh, a manifestation of that was I started to overeat and I basically gained weight and uh, you know if you look at photos of me and I'm not proud of myself for for eating in that way um, but someone's telling me something um, but that's how it was. And so I started to gain weight and less physical activity. And uh, what was a turning point was that, you know, I started to have back problems. And, you know, these things come and go. And if you've had back pain... Um, I hope I can help you um, very soon. I can give you some information. Um, is that I was doing an activity with my son in a jujitsu class, and it was like jumping up and down. And uh, what the technical term would be is I had an instability, and it created a, a disc bulge, and that was very very painful and to the point where um, the next day I think it the pain put me down to the ground and I could not get up nerve pain is not a joke and a lot of pain that people feel is related to nerve pain there's probably other things but again I'm just telling you my experience and so there was a point in time where you know I wasn't feeling very happy about myself I was in pain and uh, I think one of the turning points was when I was camping with my son and you know the pain is so great that you can barely do anything and it's uh, excruciatingly painful to do anything. So I made a decision 
the first thing I did was to try and change the food that I ate. And this is what I did and this is what worked for me. And basically uh, I tried to, the, the first thing that, for example, a doctor gives you, I got an MRI and you can see the damage and a report of my lower back and stuff like that. But the first thing a doctor does is he prescribes you anti-inflammatory medication to bring the inflammation down. So in my mind, for me, I thought, well, why not eat food that reduces the inflammation? And so I endeavoured to go on a whole food, natural food diet, try and increase protein intake, uh, kind of like a keto-style diet. And literally within the first week, it was life-changing. And then I moved towards a style of eating, which is, when I first heard it, it was, I thought, like a joke, to be honest. So this is what I did, and this is what I worked for me. And so there's a doctor... Uh, his name is Paul Mason. Um, look him up, listen to him. But I follow his suggested way of eating food. And that's what worked for me. So I'm not suggesting you to do anything. I'm just telling you what worked for me. Okay, so um, I can't give you any medical advice. I'm just telling you that the situation that I was in and a way to get out of it. Now, for me, food and the change of food was, was more important than anything else. Anything else. Now, second thing was trying to fix the lower back pain. Now, there's a man that not many people have heard about. His name is Dr. Stuart McGill. He is one of the most experienced people in the entire world when it comes to the spine. Now, if you have had any back pain you need to look this man up, all right? There's plenty of interviews on YouTube that uh, he talks about his stuff and most of the interviews are very similar in nature when they're more introductory. But um, he's got books as well, so I can put links for his books. Um, I bought his books, I've read his books and um, there's not another person on this planet that I... I can recommend more for fixing your spine than Dr. Stuart McGill. He has three exercises plus walking, which he recommends. And I can swear by these exercises as a way to reduce and fix back pain. So I can put a video in this video of me doing deadlifts with uh, some quite severe back-breaking weights. And this is an example of what can be achieved by what I have just said. And it can be achieved by anybody. Okay? So, just to go back to food. Alright? So, the way I eat now is I am happy, actually more than happy, where I can have one or two meals a day. My last meal from this very moment was approximately 22 to 23 hours ago, maybe even 24 hours ago. I'm not sure what the time is now. I haven't eaten for almost a day. Do I feel hungry? Do I feel good? So 
intermittent fasting is something that is part of my just the routine it has been now for four years four years I think it's been now I've been eating in the suggested way that Dr. Paul Mason suggests to his clientele, his audience. Um, I, I actually have to stop myself sometimes from fasting too much um, because it just I just do it now naturally um, where it just is just normal. And like if I didn't eat food for two or three days, which I've done a number of times, proper fasts, um, you feel better and better and better. But the first time you do it, you're going to feel like crap. <laughs> so uh, when you try and switch your body from the old style to the new style, it's not a pleasant experience. But once you've converted over and fasting just becomes normal, it, it's good. And so, um, so for the past four years, not 100%, but almost all of the time, I would be doing the Stuart McGill Big Three, walking every day, doing the three exercises every day, and I, I do a mobility routine. So currently, um, my, my, my goals for my body, the, the, the physical body, is that I need strength. I need mobility. I should probably do with a little bit more cardio, but I'm not that good at the whole cardio thing. So a name of a lady who I've been following for a while is Gabrielle Lyons. Um, she's a doctor, and I believe she just released a book, which I'll put a link down in the description for. Um, and there's, there's tons of doctors out there that I could suggest, but I'm just suggesting her as a a link to strength being critical as you age. So your quality of health as you age can be linked as one factor as your strength, literally your hand strength, your grip strength, how long it takes for you to get up off the ground. Like when you're 50 years old, how long does it take for me to get up off the ground, right? I can probably do it in a couple of seconds, right? but I also risk hurting myself if I do it too quickly. So how long is it going to take me when I'm 60 years old? How long is it going to take me when I'm 70 years old? How long is it going to take me when I'm 80 years old? And if I get to 90, how, how long is it going to take me to get up off the ground? Can I get up off the ground? Okay, so falling old people, Fallen, I'm sure you know that, you know, accidents like that have a very, very high rate of things happening. And so strength, mobility is my 100% goal right now to maintain that as long as possible. And so my daily routine when I go to gym is I have like a, I always start with a mobility routine where I do uh, a series of different movements, which is not so much stretching. It's more of movement into positions and, and things like that. I, I'd need to show you. Um, but that is my goal and it has been for the last four years is to stay out of back pain and like just one of the most simple things that you can do is just move 
the art of movement is one of the simplest things you can do. And that will lead me on to another link I'll put down there. There's like a, a, a very, not very well known, popular or popular podcast called The Art of Movement. Okay, and that will lead me on to the way you walk, the way you stand, the way you move. I think we do it all wrong. So there's uh, I watched what's that podcast called? I can't remember. It's got Mark Bell in it. Anyway, I watched the podcast with Mark Bell and and Seema and the other guy. Um, and they had these people and they were from a company I created called Gota Movement. And I could see something in what they were saying. But for me, there was a little bit um, miscommunication that I experienced. But they talked about just how people stand, how people walk, and um, you know how people get injured and things like that. So that led me down a path of how do I stand? Um, one thing that they were really, really good at was they talked about how the back of the body has all of this muscle and and when we stand, we're standing a lot of the time in the front of our body, whereas if you come up and stand straight, you start engaging all of the muscles in the rear of your body and that's where all of your strength is. And so there's a podcast called The Art of Movement. Um, they've had a few different people on there that teach their styles of movement. Um, one of the people, his name is David Wack, W-E-C-K. Now, I like what he says. Um, I, I think that he talks about movement in a way which is healthy, okay? And so these are some of the the things, because I can tell you now I've spent hours and hours trying to figure out how to solve my own problem. And what I'm telling you is what has helped solve my problem. Food, no inflammation in the body. Dr. Stuart McGill, strengthened the core around your back. So uh, liken your back as a series of blocks with jelly between them. They have no strength at all, none. Your, your spine cannot support anything, all right? And your spine has your most powerful, important nerves that run down it. Um, what makes you stand up is your core. And your core strength is, is the most important thing to have stability in your upright frame to avoid injury. So your core is, is the most critical part. Movement is, is, is important. So I wanted to get to a couple more people that I want to talk about. Um, Squat University. Um, the, the main part of my mobility routine comes from something that he taught. And if you listen to Squat University and Stuart McGill, that's where I would start with Stuart McGill, is look for Squat University and Stuart McGill. And they've spoken a number of times. And that, that connection, those two, those two people um, uh, are amazing. All right. So 100% recommend searching for Stuart McGill and Squat University where they talk together um, because that's a really, really good place to start. Um, something else I just wanted to mention is a guy called Sean O'Mara. I think his name is. He's a doctor. And what he talks about is he looks at your intestinal internal fat. Now, I've got scans of my when I was fat and afterwards and stuff like that, the DEXA scans. And you can just see how much um, 
fat I had around my organs and stuff like that. And uh, obviously it's greatly reduced now. Um, I'd like to get another one. But what he does is he takes an MRI scan of your gut area and he measures how much fat you have and he correlates internal fat with your health. It's basically what it is. And so, you know, that's another person to, to listen out for. So, my intention is to try and stay as healthy as I can for as long as possible to be able to function and, and have quality of life. So, every day, mobility routine, strength training. That's it. But what I'm also trying to do right now is I'm trying to reduce my fat a little bit more. Because once you get it lower, for me, it's quite difficult to reduce my fat and I have to fast a lot to do it. And so, um, you know, just a few extra kilos of weight loss reduces how much weight you have to move when you get up and things like that. And it can be very, very helpful. And so, you know, I would recommend everybody put as much effort into their health as possible. So, you know, for me, having an anti-inflammatory diet of food and movement and strength training is is what I do for me, you know, you got to figure out what it is that will work for you, but I'm just telling you what works for me. Okay, so, sorry to get all of that off my chest, so a lot of where I've been the last few years is that has been my focus. Um, another part of my focus, which is a little bit more simpler is you know what i've been watching on youtube and what i hopefully will be doing in the future and so i've got like sucked into uh, the sailing youtube channels and i have a habit of watching a number of those uh, and just following the events of these people now what you don't know is that when I was young, you know, I lived not on the water, but whenever I could get onto the water, I was on the water. And I absolutely love being on the water. Now, life comes and goes and stuff like that. But I'd like to in the future, as soon as I could, I guess is to get back onto the water and uh, I think that's something that I want so early next year I'm going to start doing some yacht type courses where I can gain the skills and then I'll start looking to get onto boats and uh, spend time on them as much time as possible just to see whether it's a life that I could live in the future and uh, use the boat to live on, use the boat to travel and use the boat to create ASMR videos, hopefully in the future. So um, that's kind of like a goal of mine, but I think it's going to be a number of years before I'll have the opportunity to to do that. So in that time, I want to see whether it is something that I can do. Will I enjoy it? I don't know. I don't know. So can I do it? I don't know. But I want to get onto sailboats and, um, and see if that's a life that I can live. Is it something I can enjoy? So I know I love the water. Uh, I know it's a lot of hard work, but I want to try it out and um, and see. So, so that's 
the midterm future. So the short term future is to be here, try and create um, a body of content that will keep going for the next 10 years or so for people. And um, I, I really hope to, to keep going. So for the last three or four years, you know, I've been wanting to come back and make videos. But you know how sometimes there's like a barrier there, it's like an invisible barrier, and you're like, mm, maybe tomorrow, mm, next week, mm, next month, and then it turned into years. So, and that barrier is gone now. I'm here, and um, the content is starting to flow again, and uh, that is hopefully that, and I can keep to continue creating content um, obviously, it will slow down in time, but, um, you know, I will plan to at least have something regular um, at a certain day, which I've never really had before, but I'm working towards regular content for you. Now, I've been getting a few comments on me doing a UFC vlog thing when there's another event, so I'll probably try and, and talk about something like that because it's something I've been following for a very, very long time, uh, something I enjoy to watch. So I'll try and do a couple of vlogs like that. Um, I've taken down a lot of people's requests uh, of the type of content that they're, they'd like me to create. So I'm trying to bring it all together and, you know, find something that works over here and find something that works over there. So there's a lot of different content that people... Um, have enjoyed in the past and so I'm trying to recreate some of that but I'm trying to focus on some new stuff and just try and have some fun with it and just enjoy the, the whole creation process thank you very much just checking everything thank you very much for for sticking around with the vlog um, hopefully You've either fallen asleep or you've uh, taken something from it that you can use in your own life. Have I missed anything? No, I've got to last some notes here just to make sure I uh, didn't miss what I wanted to say. Thank you very much.